Time for the news. Hi everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. My name is Mike and welcome to another weekly news update here at Brick Vault. A lot of small things happened this week, but also one big thing, Disney is acquiring or acquired Fox. What that means for us LEGO fans, we'll find out in the news. Uh, also, we are still building that massive UCS minifigure scale ghost. So that was day number 8 or 9, I think, as I recorded this video. Um, stick around, we're gonna finish hopefully next week. That's gonna be a massive ship, so I hope you guys still enjoy. If you didn't see it yet, go and join our live stream every day of the week. Anyway, there's gonna be also another giveaway. Uh, I'm gonna get into the details at the end of the episode. But before all that happens, let's see this week's Amazon deals. As every week guys, all the sales that are currently on Amazon sales can be found in the links below. If you use those links to purchase anything from Amazon, it helps our channel. Holidays are super close, so a lot of small sets are on sale. Those are perfect gifts from the city line. And also if you missed somehow this one, the Volcano Exploration Base, a set from the Volcano Explorers line, can be found for over $30 off. And the biggest story of this week is definitely the acquisition of the 21st Century Fox by Disney. It is not entirely LEGO news, but it will make huge impact on both LEGO and all the other companies operating in the media market, or just generally understood entertainment. The transaction settled at a whopping $52.4 billion, making it the biggest deal of this year and most likely the biggest deal of all time in all the media markets. The transaction includes 21st Century Fox film and television studios, cable entertainment networks, and international TV businesses. Many fans are concerned that Disney is just becoming a massive monopoly in the market and definitely just became the biggest media company or conglomerate on the planet right now. But apart from the future plans from the Disney company, which most likely include a lot of new TV shows and movies that were on hold or frozen for a while now, we may also see a lot of things happening in the LEGO world thanks to this acquisition. First of all, by acquiring the 21st Century Fox Film Studios, Disney is now in possession of brands such as X-Men, including Wolverine and the other guys, Deadpool, which used to be a Fox uh, ownership and for example the Simpsons. As we know Simpsons already had a theme in LEGO coming with two collectible minifigure series and two direct-to-consumer sets but if Disney goes into working more on the series and maybe launching a second Simpsons movie that would mean new sets because LEGO is hugely partnered with Disney right now. So that was the actually first thing I saw from this acquisition as a positive outcome to see more of the Simpsons in LEGO sets which may actually happen finally but also if you are looking at X-Men we only had three sets with X-Men in them and one with Deadpool and thanks to all that we will most likely see new X X-Men movies under the Disney banner and remembering the fact that Disney is the owner of the Marvel Studios we may see X-Men in the Avengers line which is the Marvel Cinematic Universe which pretty much guarantees new sets as every Marvel movie that comes out has at least a selection of sets in Lego form and I'm pretty sure Disney will not pass the opportunity to get more characters into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I am not entirely sure about the Deadpool character, he's an R-rated guy pretty much. Of course Disney has a lot of dark movies in their portfolio, but I guess LEGO will keep their way of not showing Deadpool in his uh, movie-like adult form in their sets. So far we get Deadpool in one set as I mentioned and one in the form of the Deadpool duck from the Comic Con exclusive. But still that doesn't really show the Deadpool that we've seen in the movies in his really R-rated form. But talking about X-Men, this line of heroes could use a lot of new sets. We had a few Magnetos or uh, Wolverines, but there is so much more stuff to it that I'm really surprised it wasn't part of LEGO uh, at this scale uh, before. There's a whole line of mutants that we can explore in form of minifigures, and I would be surprised if Disney passed the opportunity to not just make money out of that, just making sets with X-Men minifigures. Plus we can get characters like Galactus, Silver Surfer, a lot of other guys. I'm not very familiar with the X-Men franchise, but I did enjoy the movies and comic books to some extent. So that is a huge opportunity there that may be uh, thriving in the near future. Another thing worth mentioning is that Disney is acquiring the rights to the Fantastic Four, which we have never seen in LEGO before, so that is another superhero opportunity that cannot be simply missed. Also, if you mention the likes of Avatar, even Alien, which is a Fox property to this point, I'm sure we will not ever see Alien sets uh, with Xenomorphs and stuff, I would love it, but we will not see them in LEGO, let's be real here. We also may be debating about Futurama, American Dead, uh, Family Guy, all owned by Fox. But those shows by Seth MacFarlane I think are a bit too adulty to be included in LEGO again. Same with Deadpool as I mentioned. But things like Avatar could make a good theme similar to what we had from the Jurassic World. Maybe even Ice Age with Scrat and uh, Sid. Those animations were made by Blue Sky Studios under Fox. And we can talk about them as much as we want because there is so much stuff under Fox brand that we'll just have to wait for the coming years to see what's in that. For LEGO fans that is. Overall a very exciting announcement if I may say because so far in my personal opinion 
Disney is making the brands that they acquired pretty much thrive. I like what they're doing to Star Wars and I think Disney has proven themselves as a very good base with money to make old franchises come back to life with uh, thriving results. Remember, Disney is also behind all the Marvel movies right now and those are really good at this point. Alright, moving down to the less epic stuff, we had some sets announcement this week. The first I think the most exciting one is the announcement of the Star Wars Mos Eisley Cantina that is set number 75205, we have the official images. That is pretty much a remake from a set that came out in 2004 and this small vignette displays parts of the cantina. I mean there is an entrance, part of the bar and the famous uh, table with couches that Han Solo and Greedo meet. The main play function is that we can have swivel chairs to recreate this famous who shot first scene that is Han Solo or Greedo and of course with that we get the new Han Solo minifigure Greedo which is a different from the, the previous guy. There is also the bartender Wooher and one sand trooper which has a very good print. One additional pretty awkward part of this set is the Ubrikia 9000 pod which I wasn't really sure what it is actually when I first saw it but apparently there is a land speeder a form of vehicle in Star Wars that is seen in the New Hope for like a split second in two shots in the movie. It's parked in front of the cantina and doesn't really have any more appearance or backstory to it than just being a random vehicle on Tatooine. Well I guess it's an easter egg to all those massive Star Wars fans that go into details very much and we get this pod in from a separate build in this set. The retail price in the US is expected to be $39.99 and we don't know the release date yet but I think it's gonna be a pretty popular set especially for including Han Solo and Greedo. And as we are in the Star Wars news it's worth mentioning that the Darth Vader pod that was cancelled which we announced last week is officially being replaced with a promotion that will give you 100 VIP points on top of your Star Wars purchase starting actually today as I record this towards December 24. So a purchase of a Star Wars set that all includes keychains or magnets or books only sets finished at shop at home at Lego online or on any Lego store will give you 100 VIP points which translates to a $5 reward. In more reviews we have the seasonal sets popping up for the next year's seasons. I think it's starting with the Easter. The cool thing is to have the comeback of the brick heads in their seasonal forms. The first one that was unveiled is the Valentine's Beef set number 40270 that as the name suggests should be coming to the stores around the Valentine's Day. This one gets a nice base plate with some grass and flowers next to that, a small built heart and of course the character of a bee suit or just a bee. And this guy will be joined by more sets in the coming year that were revealed on the back of the box. For Easter we're getting the number 30 bunny brickhead, for Halloween there's gonna be a number 31 witch and right after that the number 32 turkey for Thanksgiving that is. The next year's Christmas we should see the 33 Mr. Claus and number 34 Mrs. Claus. It's kind of weird that they revealed all the brickheads for the coming year in the first one. I was hoping to see them getting unveiled as the year goes, now we know what to expect way too early. Also joining the announcements for 2018 we have the official images for the elves line. Those will be available later in this year starting at March 1st. But we know we're getting 5 sets, the first one here is Emily Jones and the Eagle Getaway set number 41190 with 149 pieces. The second one is Nida and the Water Turtle Ambush set number 41191 with 205 pieces. Azari and the Fire Lion Capture, set number 41192 with uh, 360 pieces. Eira and the Song of the Wind Dragon, 41193 with 451 pieces. And Noctura's Tower and the Earth Fox Rescue, 41194. This one has uh, 646 pieces. As you can see, all of them include some kind of a creature paired with the character in the set, so I can also see those being a very popular launch for the fans of the Elves line. Another seasonal set is the 2018 Wedding Favor, replacing the current year's wedding favor which is a very very popular set I can say. This one's a bit different showing a nice wedding cake and a wedding gate with of course the minifigures for groom and the bride and you can have also a selection of different hairstyles and even a small bouquet. The interesting part here is this one includes a new mold for a flower and new mold for the leaves. Those leaves can also be visible in the upcoming diner from the creator line. The retail price should remain at $9.99. Another seasonal set is the seasonal flowers, this one will also be available for $10 and contains only 100 pieces. Perfect thing for your desk and you don't even have to water them. Also a thing I'm really waiting for is the 60 years of the Lego brick gift with purchase set. Now we have the official images for this guy. Again the box reminds me of the last year's employee gift with the 50 years on track set. And this one will be available for $125 or more purchase starting January 28th to February 14th next year. The four mini versions of the iconic sets include the airport shuttle 6399, the castle 375, 
the Black Seas Barracuda, which we have in the studio, it's being one of the greatest sets of all time from the old days. And the fourth one is the Space Cruiser and the Moon Base, set number 928. This one also gets a 2x4 tile with a printed commemorative design. And in my personal ranking, it may be one of the best gifts we've purchased ever made. And as we are talking about this one and mentioned the employee gift from last year, this year's employee gift was unveiled and it's pretty awesome. That is a Nutcracker, which is a pretty massive one, vastly different than the one that was given with gift we've purchased a few weeks ago. And this one commemorates the 40 year anniversary of the Technic line that makes this guy built from Technic mostly. Some pictures emerge on the internet as employees all over the world start to getting them. You can see the size of the box is pretty awesome as the size of the Saturn V box in terms of height. It comes in a booth that looks like one of those London's guard booths. The thing is standing pretty tall, but also looks kind of creepy with this weird face. But hey, that's how the Nutcracker goes, right? Anyway, a great idea and uh, very interesting that it's all actually Technic. I wasn't expecting that. I believe this set will become very collectible very soon. So LEGO employees will be lucky to get it. Anyone else will have to pay a fairly high price on the aftermarket if they want to get the, one of these. Also, another collectible minifigure was announced, and this one is a very location-specific guy. There is a British Royal Guard connected heavily to the Hamleys' famous toy store on Regent Street in London. That should be a not-so-expensive polybag for about £6, and it's resembling the Royal Guard from the minifigure collectible series 5. But he has a bit different print and some different face expression, so that makes him exclusive. I'm glad that LEGO is making them more available for everyone in forms of cheap polybags, instead of keeping them super rare and hard to find. Also, we have good news for the Speed Champions fans, the sets are coming back next year. We have the names and the numbers for the coming sets, no pictures yet, but according to the Eurobricks forum we are getting at least 6 cars next year. That is a 1968 Ford Mustang Fastback, set number 75884, really excited for this one in particular. The next one is Ford Fiesta M Sport WRC, which is a rally car, set number 75885. Ferrari 488 GT3 Scuderia Corsa, that should be a really cool one with a set number 75886. Also, we're getting the Porsche 919 Hybrid and also the Porsche 911 RSR Plus 911 Turbo that seems like a Porsche commemorative set which is like something what Ford did last year that should be awesome. Those sets are numbers 75887 and 75888 and the last one we know about is a Ferrari Garage with a 250 GTO and 488 GT that's a Ferrari commemorative set with a set number 75889. So I guess we're getting more of what was favorite in this year for me which was the Ford commemorative set. Moving down Cartoon Network announced the premier for the Unikitty series. The premiere date is January 1st, starting at 6 a.m. on the channel, you will be able to see six new episodes. The premiere lineup for Monday, January 1st looks like that. We have the Action Forest episode, followed by the Kaiju Kitty, Fire and Nice, Rock Friend, Kitchen Chaos, and Crushing Defeat. This show kind of appeals to me because it looks like uh, similar to the Dexter's Laboratory line, uh, sketching and humor. I think it may be fun if I have a chance or time, I will try to catch on those episodes. And before I move into the LEGO Ideas section, there is one cool thing to mention about the UCS Millennium Falcon. I know many of you are trying to still get one of these. But the good thing is that LEGO uh, own waitlist that was announced a few months ago is pretty much coming to an end. I mean, we have reports of many stores getting the Falcons and getting them to customers from the waitlist and closing the waitlist that way. So we may be able to get the Falcon on the actual store shelves earlier than expected. So thank you to everyone who reported on getting their Falcon from the waitlist. Best of luck on getting your own pretty soon. Now let's see what's happening on LEGO Ideas, a platform allowing people to submit their sets for LEGO to consider to manufacture. No new sets were approved for the review stage this week, but there is a creation I would like to highlight it this week. This is a steam fire engine by Mr. Kleinstein and that is of course a car from the beginning of the last century. This one is of German design, I think coming from 1914 according to the designer and definitely this model is a piece of history. Very original and using a lot of Technic parts to create this crazy framework inside and it is so interesting I would just reasonably see that as an idea set. Lego loves to come back to the old days with their creator sets so I think a car of this size and uh, uniqueness would find its own place in either ideas on the creator line as well. I don't know much about the old days cars, but I would love to know more just from this set. I think it will be very educational and the design itself is by the way pretty pretty good. The model has about 1250 parts and initially it was designed in LED but right now has its physical form. There is also a lot of mechanical details so the designer did not cut any corners. So good luck Mr. Kleinstein on getting this guy into the review stage. And that is it for this week's news update. Thank you guys so much for watching. Before we finish, let's get into the details of this giveaway. This time around, we have this set for you. That is the Mountain Police Headquarters, set number 70174. Really fun one, I have to say. I like this one a lot. 
The link is below to the Glim.io system of giveaways. You can uh, join there and you can complete some social media actions to gain more chances pretty much. Few ground rules, you have to be in the US and you have to be over 13 years of age to join. So make sure you are following the rules. Good luck guys, join the link, uh, the giveaway in the link below. But for now, that is it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. My name is Mike and I'll see you again on BreakVault. Thank <laughs> you.